Every song has a story. And the carols of Christmas are linked to a world of fascinating legends, ideas, and history. This is the Annotated Christmas Songbook. The world was a much more isolated place in 1904. There were no electrified cities, no highway systems, and barely any way to communicate. Electric communication was in its infancy, and at night the planet became a vast, cold ocean of darkness, with scattered islands of lonely warmth and light. The night world was impenetrable, dangerous, and solitary. So imagine the surprise of the lonely handful of people who owned radio receivers when one December night they picked up a strange communication. Radio at this time was a means of passing information, like a telegraph or a telephone. The idea it could be used for anything else was unimaginable. But that Christmas Eve night in 1904, a voice was broadcast into the ether. It was the voice of Canadian engineer Reginald Fessenden, and it was the first radio broadcast in history. Not a message from one person to another, but a story to be shared with anyone who could hear. Fessenden read the story of the Nativity, and then he picked up his violin and began to play. O Holy Night, known in its native France as Minuit Chrétien, or simply La Cantique Noël, the Christmas Carol. It is one of the most beautiful and well-loved carols in history. So it may come as a surprise that the Catholic Church actually banned O Holy Night for decades. In 1847, two people were hired to write a hymn for the church in Roquemore. Placide Capot de Roquemore wrote the words, and the melody was composed by Adolf Charles Adams. The song debuted that Christmas and was an immediate hit, soon spreading around the nation, sung in parish churches throughout France. But once it was learned that Adolf Adams was a Jew, and that Placide Capot had renounced his faith to become a socialist, the Catholic Church immediately forbade its singing anywhere in the country. They said the song was devoid of religious spirit. But the song continued to be sung in secret. It was shared behind closed doors, its beauty a thing to be treasured amongst close friends. And so it might have remained were it not for one notable incident during the Franco-Prussian War. It was Christmas Eve, and two warring nations regarded each other across the battlefield. Everyone knew the German artillery were ready to rain death upon their enemies. But that Christmas Eve, a French soldier rose from his ranks, walked out into the deadly field of battle, and sang. Minuit, he sang, O Holy Night. He sang clear, he sang strong. And when he was finished, there was silence. A silence that lingered. A silence that invited contemplation. A silence that was only broken by a German voice. A German voice that replied with a carol by Martin Luther. The guns did not fire that day, 
just like the song Silent Night would famously do in a great war decades later, O Holy Night forged a bond of peace in the midst of conflict. When the story of the Christmas truce got out, the church lifted their ban. Today, it is traditional in France to sing the song during Mass at the stroke of midnight. Perhaps there is some religious spirit in it after all. Here's Glynis Price, O Holy Night.
This has been the Annotated Christmas Songbook, created and written by David Belke. O Holy Night was performed by Glynis Price, with Spencer Krasanowski on piano. Recorded by Danielle Key at Holy Trinity Anglican Church in Edmonton, Alberta. Intro music by Aaron Kenny. Outro music by Ease Jammy Jams. The Annotated Christmas Songbook is a production of Holy Trinity Anglican Church and the Acme Radio Project. <laughs>